All right, let's get right into the message. Show them what we're talking about today. What does it say on the screen? Let every man speak the truth. This is a commandment for us to speak the truth. Now, last night in our message, we went over the biblical definitions of the word truth. We're going to recap those because it got quiet for a second when I was like, somebody give me what the Bible says about truth. And y'all was like, yeah, I'm not really going to start mumbling again, right? So we're going to go over these verses. We're going to run through them real quick. And this is one of those things where because you have to become someone who tells the truth, you need to write these verses down so that you can go home, look at them again, right? Go ahead, get your notebook, pull out your phone. I'm going to show you five verses and you're going to need to know these verses because the scripture tells us, let every man speak the truth. Okay. You guys ready? He said, one sec, I need to sharpen my pencil. <laughs> All right, here we go. Give me Psalms 119, verse 142. Somebody stand up and read it out loud. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Amen. Okay, so that's the first definition of truth. What is the truth in that verse? The law, the law is the truth. Jump down to verse 151. Somebody stand up and read it out loud. How come? Thou art dear, O Yahweh, and all thy commandments are truth. Amen, amen. Okay, so what is the truth in this verse? Commandments. The commandments are the truth. Okay, now give me John chapter 14, verse 6. Somebody stand up and read it loud. Yahweh Shai saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Hallelujah. Okay, now in that same book, John, give me chapter 17, verse 17. Somebody stand up and read it out loud. Put some bass in your voice. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Amen. Okay. So now let me get you this last one. Now, all of those things are one thing. All of those things are the truth, right? The law, the commandments, the word, and Yahweh Shai himself. Now give me first John chapter five, verse six. It says, this is he that came by water and blood, even Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. You guys got those five verses? The, the first Psalms 119 verse 142 was the first one. Psalms 119 verse 151 was the second one. And then there's two in the book of John. We have John 14, 6 and John 17, 17. We are supposed to be speaking the truth. Now, if Yah is the truth and Yahweh Shah is the truth, what are you supposed to be? We have a commandment to speak the truth. I'm supposed to be the truth. It's hard for me to speak something that I'm not. Give me Leviticus chapter 19 and let's take a look at verse 11. The scripture says, ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. If I'm not supposed to lie to my people, what am I supposed to tell them? The truth, put an F in it when you say it. You need to tell me the truth, right? Give me verse 12. Watch this. It says, and ye shall not swear by my name falsely. Neither shalt thou profane the name of Yah. I am Yahweh. So we are commanded not to lie and to speak the truth. Now that we've seen the law that commands us not to lie. You guys know what a statute is? Because remember the Bible is full of laws. Statutes, commandments, judgments. A statute is how you regulate the law. Because what happens if I tell a lie? Do you guys just stole me to death? No, it's not punishable by blood. I got to make it right. I got to tell the truth. I got to repent and I got to restore. So I've shown you the law. Now I'm going to show you the statute. Give me Leviticus chapter 6, verse 1. The scripture says, And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, verse 2, If a soul sin... And commit a trespass against Yahweh and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep. Let me break that part down. I want you to imagine that uh, that's a nice shirt you got right there, Mark. And let me hold that shirt for a couple of weeks. You know what I'm saying? Let me just borrow that. And it's in my closet. And then I get some bleach on it or I spill some Kool-Aid. Why Kool-Aid? 
We like, because we like Kool-Aid. I done messed up your whole shirt. You let me hold on to it for a while. And you say, yeah, prophet, let me get that shirt back. And I'm like, oh, bro, see what had happened was, uh, and I start making up a story about what happened instead of just telling the truth. That's something that you delivered to me to keep. Okay. Now I've destroyed that thing. Now let's get back to the verse. It says, or in fellowship, that means we're talking and a little lie slips out of my mouth or in anything taken away by violence or hath deceived his neighbor. So in any place where there is a discrepancy between two brothers because of a lie, this is what needs to take place. Give me verse three. It says, or have found that which was lost and lieth concerning it. What's that mean? Bro, remember when you was at my house and you lost your wallet? <laughs> nah, I didn't find it. <laughs> I didn't find it. But your, your driver's license picture is not cute. How you know about my driver's license picture if you didn't find my wallet? See, you lost something. I found it and said, no, I didn't find it. I lied, right? Or have found that which was lost and lieth concerning it and sweareth falsely in any of all these that a man doeth sinning therein. So in any way, shape, and form wherein you have told a lie and that lie has become a sin, give me verse four. It says, then it shall be because he hath sinned and is guilty that he shall, what's that word? Restore that which he took violently away. Now, if there is no specific thing, right? When you tell a lie, there is always a thing that you take violently away. You take away the truth. In every relationship, you're like, our relationship is built on truth and honesty. I tell you the truth. You tell me the truth. When a lie gets told, you have to restore that thing which was violently taken away or the thing which he hath deceitfully gotten or that which was delivered him to keep or the lost thing which he found. Does all make sense? I have to repent. And in addition to my repentance, I have to restore. Give me verse five. It says, or all that about which he hath sworn falsely, he shall even restore it in the principle. Now watch, this is, this is some compound mathematics right here. What's the principle? I borrowed that shirt. Now it says I have to restore it in the principle. What's that? I got to give that, I got to give that same shirt back. Does you guys make that sense? That's the principle. That's the first thing. The thing that I borrowed must be returned. It says, and shall add the fifth part more thereto. What does that mean? No, it's not a deposit. I need to add, it's five, think of it, compound. I need to add five. I, I got his shirt. I destroyed his shirt. I lied about it. I need to restore that shirt and then bless him five times more. I need to come up with five more so that he's blessed because of what I took away. Does that make sense? You're not just giving back. You're giving back and making it better than it was before. Now take a look at this verse again. It says, or all that about which he hath sworn falsely, he shall even restore it in the principle and shall add the fifth part more thereto and give it unto him whom to whom it appertaineth in the day of his trespass offering. So when the day that I'm making a restoration to this thing, I can't just be like, my bad, bro. <laughs> you good. No, I need to be like, yo, that was my bad. And I'm very sorry, because if that happened to me, this is what I would want. I would want someone to give me back the thing that was, I would first want somebody to admit, hey, you know what I'm saying? I lied and I took your thing and now I'm going to give it back. But not only am I going to give it back, I'm going to bless you by giving you five times more than you had before. Isn't that what you would want? Then that's what you're supposed to do to someone. So if we have lied and broken a relationship, we need to repent and restore that situation. Does that make sense? Have you guys ever thought about where we would be without the law, without understanding the law? Think about where you were when you didn't know the law. <laughs> sin, sin negotiating. That's what it is. Yeah. You were sin negotiating. I might be able to get away with it. I'm going, I'm going to do it even if I can't. Yeah. How can we be like Christ without the instructions that he followed? That's not possible. That's not possible, is it? So, but there are a lot of religions that are based on the idea of being like Christ without following the instructions that Christ followed. You can't actually be like him. You end up being more similar to a counterfeit version of him talking about him, but not walking about him. You know what I'm saying? Watch this. Yah is the light. The father is the light. 
In him, there's no darkness at all. Yahweh Shai said that he is what? The light of the world. And what did he say about you? You are the light of the world. See, so you can see that Yahweh Shai was doing his best to be like his father. And we have to be doing our best to be like Yahweh Shai. He's our example in this world. For like, if you follow me, I'm going to fail you. If I follow you, you're going to fail me. The scripture says, do not put your trust in a man. I need to continually trust in Yahweh Shai. He's the door. Can't nobody get to the father without him. Give me John chapter, first John chapter one. Give me verse five. The scripture says, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that Yah is what? Light. And in him is no darkness at all. Okay. Now watch this verse six. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, what do we do? We lie and do not the truth. So here in this verse, we find out that the truth is something more than, ha than just what's told. You don't just tell the truth. You have to do the truth. Your whole life can be a lie. <laughs> Think about that for a second. If everything that you believe is false or is based in some opinion that you heard, then you're not doing the truth. What you're doing is a lie. Give me this next verse, verse seven. He says, but... If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. How are we going to be able to fellowship with each other? It's written on the screen. We have to walk a certain way. We have to walk. Now watch this. Watch how this works. I'm just going to give you the precepts. It says, uh, if we walk, that's our keyword. How are we supposed to be walking in the light as he is in the light? What do we have? Fellowship one with another. Why? Because can two walk together except they be agreed? No, they cannot. So if there's somebody in your life who wants to continually walk in darkness, everything they say is darkness, everything they think is darkness, and everything they do is darkness, how can you keep walking with them and also say that you're walking with Yahweh Shai? Some, something don't add up, ain't that right? But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Some sins? Because I'm walking in the light, I can be cleansed from all of my sins. Um, pop quiz real quick. Somebody tell me, what is this light that he's talking about? The law. The law. Give me Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Let's see that. This light is the law. It says, for the commandment is a what? And the law is what? And reproofs of instruction are what? Okay, so when it says, now take me back to 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. We were looking at that verse 7. It says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship. What does that actually mean? If I walk in the law and you walk in the law and he walked in the law, everybody is walking the same way because we all agree with the instruction that we have. Without that, you walk in one way and I'm walking another way and everybody's just going their own way. Do you guys know what the definition of life is without the law? It's, it's one word. It's very simple. It's called lawless. Lawless. So when you're talking to somebody and they don't believe that they need to keep the law, you say, oh, so you're lawless. And then they'll be like, no, I'm not. Well, how is it possible that you're not lawless if you don't believe you got to keep the law? That's the definition. Lawless means without law. That's how you live your life. How can you say you're not lawless? Does that make sense? Okay, watch this. Uh, give me verse 8. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. It says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Okay, so the truth is something that you say, but it's also something that you do. And the only way you'll be able to say it and do it is if it's in you. You see that? It's got to be in you. That's the reason why we spend so much time soaking up this word. The bread of life is how you get the truth in you. If you say that you have no sin, who are you deceiving? You deceiving, you deceiving yourself. Give me this next verse. Watch what happens. Verse 9, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from some unrighteousness. It says all unrighteousness. So what do I need to do in order to be cleansed from my unrighteousness? 
I need to confess my sins. Okay, so this is the process of repenting. It has four steps. These four steps take place in a split second in the spirit. But what are these four steps? When I truly repent, the first thing I do is I acknowledge that I have sinned. And then the second, second thing that I do is I confess it. Because to acknowledge is like, yeah, I know I did wrong, but I'm not going to say nothing. No, you got to say something. You have to acknowledge to the father and say, okay, now what's this third thing? I have to forsake it. I can't keep doing it over and over and over. And then what's that last one? Ask for forgiveness. Because even though I've done all three, if I don't ask for forgiveness, I'm still guilty. So those are the four steps to repentance. And that's what I must do in order to be cleansed from all unrighteousness. Give me one more verse. Verse 10. Look, it says, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Notice how in the last verse it said, the truth is not in us. And in this verse it says, his word is not in us. Why is that? Because what is his word? His word is the truth. We're supposed to be speaking the truth with every man that we come in contact with. Because a lie is the opposite of the truth. If we, if we um, speak the truth, we are the children of Yah. If we speak lies, whose children are we? Think about that for a second. You are the child of Satan. Remember when Yahweh Shai was discussing with the scribes and the Pharisees? And he said, we don't have the same father. <laughs> he said, we don't have the same father because I speak the truth and you guys speak lies. Well, let me show you. Give me John chapter 8 and let's start at verse 43. This is what Yahweh Shai says to him. He says, why do ye not understand my speech? <laughs> He's like, how come you can't understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> It says, even because ye cannot hear my word. Now, we already seen it multiple times. What is his word? It's the truth. And because they cannot receive the truth, they don't understand the words that are coming out of his mouth. Give me verse 44. He says, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Wow. Okay, so when I speak the truth, when I have a life that's built on speaking the truth, I'm the child of light. I'm the child of Yah. But if my life and my commitment is to speaking lies, I'm the child of Satan. You guys see that? I'm the child of Satan. Okay, so watch this. Give me one more verse, verse 45 in that same place. Watch what he says here. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. See, when you're talking to somebody and you're telling them the truth and you know that the truth is the word, it's the commandments, you're telling them these things and they don't believe these things, it's because there's no place in them where this word can settle, right? It, it hits them and it makes them feel bad, so they reject it. When you're talking to somebody who loves the truth and you bring up a scripture or you break down a precept, it's almost like you're building them up. Like they receive that and they're like, oh, hallelujah. Let me have that. I'm going to write that down so that I can give that away to somebody else. Because there's a place in that person for the truth. Where do the children of lies go? They go into the lake of fire. Watch this. I want you to see how many times the scripture says this. Give me Psalms chapter 15, verse 1. It says, Yahweh. Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Now, this is David, and he's speaking to the Father. And this is the question in verse 1. The answer is in verse 2. When you're reading this portion, you have to see it's a conversation going back and forth. He says, Yahweh, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Well, what's the holy hill? Zion. Okay, give me this next verse. He tells you straight out. He says, he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. Who gets to go to the kingdom? There it is right there. He that you got to walk upright. You got to do righteousness and you got to speak the truth in your heart. Okay. Now give me Proverbs chapter 12. Let's take a look at verse 17. It says, he that speaketh truth sheweth forth righteousness. You see how one is related to the other? You guys remember the very first precept that I showed you this morning? 
It was the definition of the truth. It ought to, see, when certain words are spoken in succession, it ought to cause the precept to come to your mind. Look at what it says on the screen. He that speaketh truth, that's our key word, sheweth forth righteousness. You guys see that? Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is so now you have a precept to go with the other precept that I gave you. This scripture must go with that scripture or else somebody will make up their own righteousness. It says, he that speaketh truth sheweth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. A false witness is always, always trying to deceive people. Okay. Give me the next verse. Verse 18. He says, there is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. So there's, there's people out there that speak and every time they speak, it's like the piercing of a sword. It's trying to damage you. It's trying to cut you. It says, but the tongue of the wise is health. So two different types of people talking one, every time they're talking, it's a lie and it's damaging you and it's killing you. The other person, every time they speak, it's the truth and it's adding health to your body. All right. Give me the next verse. Verse 19. It says the lip of truth shall be established forever but a lying tongue is but for a moment does that make sense because the question was where do the children of lies go and you guys said they go into the lake of fire that's true where do the children of truth go they go into the kingdom the lip of truth shall be established forever but a lying tongue is but for a moment now watch let's prove that give me revelation chapter 22 verse 14 Revelation 22, 14, the scripture says, blessed are they that do what? Do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So what is it that you want to be able to do? You, I don't want to just get there. Some, some people are like, I just want to get there. No, I want to be able to enter in through the gates into the city because on the outside of the city, there's a special group of people. Give me verse 15. It says, for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. See, the children of lies, they don't get into the kingdom. We have to become the children of truth by knowing the truth and speaking the truth. Does that make sense? When we want to change the pattern in our lives and our behaviors and we want to get closer to the father we can't keep doing the same things over and over that we used to do you guys know that right who knows the definition of insanity so-called definition it's, it's what doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result yeah that's what it is you can't do that in your life you have to do something different so that you can be someone different does that make sense you have to do the truth so that you can tell the truth so that you can become the truth. Take a look at the old version of you. Let me introduce you to the old version of yourself. Isaiah 59 verse 2. Scripture says, but your iniquities have separated between you and your Yah. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Remember that? Remember when you used to pray all the time and it wouldn't work out. You'd be trying stuff, trying stuff. Don't work. Give me this next verse, verse three, watch. It says, for your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. And here's the reason why. What does it, get? What does it say? That's the problem right there. Oh, I'm your child, I'm your child. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. Give me verse four. It says, None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity. They speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. That's what it was like when we didn't know the law. When we were dedicated or committed not to the truth, that's what it was like. He didn't answer us. He didn't hear. Everything that happened to us was a happenstance. It just so happened, right? But now it's not like that. So what we're doing now, if you guys have not figured this out yet, you're not just coming here to hear some songs and to hear me break down the word. You were coming here to learn how to live on purpose. 
Everybody out there is living on accident. Whatever happens to them, it's an accident and they deal with it. We are learning how to live on purpose according to his will, right? Give me a precept real quick, Tom. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. We come here so that we can learn to live on purpose. Um, your life is very predictable when you're following the most high. You guys know that, right? You have a purpose and you're walking in your purpose and not a lot happens where you're like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Right? That doesn't happen that much. Give me Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. It's a precept real quick. I'm going to get into that one after. Um, we have to be people of purpose and the purpose is what we're called to do. It's our whole duty. Does that make sense? Now take a look at what it, give me Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. I know I sprung this one on you real quick. Sometimes they just be coming to me. Verse 13. Who, who knows what it says? Verse 13. You getting it? It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What I got to do? Fear Yah and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of a man. This is our entire duty. And duty is your purpose. What you are meant to do, you're meant to live on purpose by following it. That's crazy right there. I'm, I'm going in. I don't know where you went in that one. Go ahead and give me that Ecclesiasticus. It's a slide. I want to show you our instructions. We have two instructions and I'm going to wrap it up. This is Ecclesiasticus chapter 7 verse 12. It says, devise not a lie against thy brother, neither do the like to thy friend. Does that make sense? Look at verse 13. It says, use not to make any manner of lie for the custom thereof is not good. That's your instruction. That's how you're going to start being the new version of you, how you're going to start walking in your purpose and fulfilling it. You don't use even any manner of lie. Let me show you this last verse that I have. Ephesians chapter four, verse 25. This is what we need to do now. It says, wherefore put away lying, speak every man, what does every man got to speak? Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Amen. Amen. This is the message that we have for today. <laughs> Hallelujah.